Well, we want to bring back in our political analyst, former Mayor Lori Lightfoot, and Republican strategist Pat Brady. So Democratic A-listers, we laid out a lot of them who will be speaking, Michelle Obama. Uh, that first night, though, a key one will be President Joe Biden. He takes the stage tomorrow night. And of course, that's just weeks after stepping down as the nominee. So, Mayor, let's start with you. The importance of his speech, because, you know, he weeks ago would have been the one up there speaking on a Thursday night, but now he has to make the case for Harris. What does he need to do? You know, look, I, I think he's got to um, really emphasize um, and have this moment where they can break through all the incredible accomplishments. Most recently, obviously, he and Vice President uh, Harris took the stage to talk about the renegotiation of uh, fees and costs for um, pharmaceutical uh, drugs that many, many Americans across the board uh, depend upon. But I think it's about, it's about legacy burnishing for him. It's about passing the baton formally um, to Vice President Harris. Um, but also, frankly, he will probably continue to make the case as to why this um, election is so important, because really democracy is on the ballot. It makes you wonder, Pat, if the, we might see a little different Joe Biden tomorrow, because he doesn't have the weight of this campaign on him anymore. But you brought up a point to me last week, and that was that Nikki Haley said the first party that gets rid of its 80-year-old candidate is going to win. And <laughs> yeah, and I, th I think the, uh, President Biden's in a kind of a tough spot, because for all the accomplishments that you cite, he's tremendously unpopular uh, nationally. And that's just kind of the reality of it. So there's got to be some kind of distancing. Kamala Harris has got to distance herself from him somewhat if she wants to be successful because on inflation, on immigration, on some other issues, um, those policy positions or what they did is not particularly popular. So I think it will be a different kind of speech. I think he will be relieved. Uh, it'll be He'll be warmly received here. Mm -hmm. But there's going to have to be some separation there. Uh, between the two, I think if she's going to be successful. So I got I got to disagree with Pat a little bit here. Look, I, I think that um, people are feeling a little nostalgic for Biden. They're not saying that they want him back, but I think that they feel some emotion about the fact that this man who's worked his whole life to get to this point now is stepping away and frankly done so uh, gracefully. And I think, um, frankly, unfortunately, too much of the focus is about him, his personality, his infirmities, mm -hmm. uh, or alleged infirmities, I should say, his age. But when you look at what this administration has done and now three years to really change the trajectory, particularly for working individuals, working families, all of those policies are wildly popular, but people don't know them. The thing that people like me used to say repeatedly to his team, you got to figure out how you can break through because people don't know that street that got paved. That's Joe Biden in the infrastructure. The lives that were saved during COVID is because he came in right away and righted the ship with the federal government's uh, response to. I get to disagree oh, back. No. <laughs> we're down to 80 days and if the country hasn't figured that out yet the argument's not going to be won I, I think she needs to kind of stay out of the policy and talk about her vision for the future that's why I, I don't disagree there's some huge accomplishments there but the public is, hasn't seen it you think this comes down to the person I do oh, the Unless, policy it, it, but it, anything could change but if it stays the person and the the prospect of a younger forward-looking everything she represents I think she'll have a pretty good night but if we start getting into some of these policies some of these policies aren't as popular as with the, uh, yeah, the rest I, of the country I, I, I think the campaign is not going to get bogged down in policy statements particularly when you got somebody on the other side that doesn't know anything about policy and isn't interested in actual governance. Um, that is a big, that's a big difference. But I'm, what I'm suggesting to you is the, there are things that hit people in the pocketbook, things that make a difference in their individual life that are there because of Joe Biden, and they don't know that. So I think tomorrow's speech, he'll run through some of the litany of things that they have done and been able to accomplish. And, you know, I hope, frankly, she doesn't do what Al Gore did um, so many years ago, which is run away from a record because of the the ethical issues surrounding the former uh, President Clinton. Right. They've got her. She's got a record to run on. Well, Definitely a lively back and forth. We get to continue throughout the week. Thank you both. <laughs> also, you know, we'll be talking about some of the other speakers as we continue, including yep. Hillary Clinton. Uh, you have a, a great angle on Commons' role yes. in bringing this to Chicago. So we'll get to all of that. Thank you.